Hi, Mama's Making Six Figures. Today, I get to interview Alma, the owner of Fina Beauty. I think for me, the thing that was so impactful about this podcast is, number one, she struggled with postpartum depression, which unfortunately a lot of women um, go through at the same time that she was opening her business. And I think that there's just a lot in that. There's a lot that you can learn from it and just sweet and very driven. I think you'll really enjoy this one. Welcome to Moms Making Six Figures. Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. My name is Heidi Bartolotta. I'm your host. In this podcast, you will hear real women, real stories, and real inspiration. If you enjoy it, please subscribe. Hi. Hi, Oma. Hi. How are you? (laughs) I'm good. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for yeah. having me. This I'm is really going to be a fun one, I think. I think so, too. Yeah. Where's the champagne? <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> thanks for having me, though, really. Yeah. Excited. Um, so will you start out by just talking about your business journey? How did you end up being a business owner? Yeah, let me try to consolidate it to, like, five seconds instead. Um, well, yeah, I'm Elma. I own, obviously, Fina Beauty Co., Um, I started out with just a nail salon, and now we've expanded in the last year to having a hair salon as well. Um, It started with me actually just shadowing the girl that used to own the salon space that I'm in. And I shadowed her. I did all of, like, I don't know if it's appropriate to say, but, like, the bitch work, you know? Mm -hmm. I was doing everything for everybody, running around. And then soon enough, she had to take a step back, and I kind of filled her shoes. And then I moved on to other things, and when she was ready to let it go... I just kind of fell into that spot. Um, It definitely didn't come easy, and I'm sure we'll dive into some more of those things. Mm -hmm. But I just had the opportunity to kind of take over her space, transform it into what I wanted it to be because I realized what it was wasn't actually working. Mm -hmm. So transform that. Um, I had my five-year plan of expanding to different services. At one point, I lost sight of that, almost let go of the whole business and everything. And then suddenly I had the opportunity to expand Um, just over a year ago, and I just took it, and now we have two salons. We've got about 19 people and stylists in the salon, and it's going great now. So, yeah. So it's the short story. Yeah. So go back to the beginning. So you were working. You were basically working for Mm -hmm. her, and when she decided that she was ready to move on, Mm -hmm. you bought the business. Yeah. So at the time that I bought the business from her, I wasn't working for her any longer. Mm -hmm. Um, I worked for her before that. And it started while I was in school. So I was in beauty school. I was working at a bank actually from like 9 to 4.30. Then I'd go to school from from 5 to 10. Mm -hmm. And then anytime I wasn't doing that, I'd be in her salon. So Mm -hmm. Sundays. And then after work, I'd go or after school, I'd go and close and do whatever she needed me to do. Um, she went away for a little while, which is when I took over her salon and doing all that. I dropped school for a couple months even to be able to really focus on helping her out with her salon. Mm-hmm. And then once she came back into the picture of the things, and um, I kind of realized it wasn't necessarily maybe what I wanted anymore in working for somebody, and we were really good friends. And some of the business decisions that were happening weren't aligning for me, and it was affecting our friendship, and so I had to step away. So I went on and I leased a station somewhere else, completely different salon. Mm -hmm. While I was doing that, um, she had met somebody, was trying to move, and she was trying to sell her business. Well, I was nine months pregnant, living in my in-law's house with my husband while our house was being built. So I was like, oh, I wish I could do this, but timing's horrible, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was just like, no, it's not going to happen. It can't happen. And then one day I was just driving home from work at like 11 o'clock at night and I had to get gas. And I was like, I am pregnant nine months. I'm getting gas at 11 o'clock because I don't have time to do anything. And so in my head, I was like, how do I get out of this and like still have an income, but be able to be a mom? Like, how am I going to sustain this while I'm trying to care for a child and stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so in that moment, I was like, I should buy her business. So I texted her and I said, I think I want to buy your business. And She called me right away. She's like, oh, my gosh, are you serious? And like I said, it's almost midnight at this point. (laughs) And she's like, well, what are you doing? And I said, I'm getting gas. And I was like, I'll go talk to my husband, and I'll let you know what he says. And so I'm like internally, I'm like preparing, like, how do I sell this to my husband? Like, how do I sell him on another crazy adventure right now while we're about to have our first child? We're about to move into our first house. And so I get home, and I'm like, hey, I think I want to buy the business. 
And he's like, what business? I said, the salon, you know? And he's like, all right, babe, let's do it. And I was like, oh, shoot, wait, that was, that was too easy. easy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, sometimes I say, like, he's supportive to a fault, you know? Like, <laughs> he supports everything I do, which is amazing. But sometimes I'm like, stop me. But then it became not so easy, right? The purchase yeah. and the transition. Yeah. And I mean, it started with the purchase. I'm not, like, a trust fund baby. Like, you know, I had to figure out how to come up with the funds of buying the business. I didn't have this huge savings. I mean, we were literally just building our house, pouring our savings into that and Mm -hmm. a down payment and everything like that and having a child. And um, I didn't have insurance at the time to cover my child's, like, birth and labor, and that was, like, a lot, lot. too. So it was just a lot of money going everywhere that I was like, I don't have that to do. So we actually went with a business loan. Mm -hmm. It was going to be an SBA loan, and then that switched because of um, something to do with her end of things. But we couldn't do an SBA loan, so it ended up being, like, a basic loan at the bank. Mm -hmm. Um, And that took about two months to, like, square away. It's not as simple as people think. Like, you just go and are like, hey, I want to buy this business. Give Mm -hmm. me the funds. You have to come up with a pretty, like, aggressive, wholesome business plan, you know? So we had to do all that, which I did not know much about, which is where my husband came in. He's very good at that kind of stuff. So he was able to do all the projections and things like that, the stuff that's boring and I hate to do. So he did that for me. Um, We got the business loan. It took a couple months. And then it was like it just the hard started there. Um, We got into the salon. I was six weeks postpartum when I got back into the salon my first day as the owner there. And when I walked in, it was, like, great, but I was like, oh, my gosh, what did I do? Yeah. It was That's insane. a lot all at once. Yeah. A newborn and a new business. Mm-hmm. It's basically a baby. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, it is a baby. While there's a baby at home that I'm trying to, like, think about. And I did struggle a lot with postpartum depression, which I don't talk about a lot. <laughs> oh, shoot. I wasn't going to do that. Oh, hell, you guys, I need tissues. <laughs> Um, But, yeah, so I was struggling a lot with that and then jumping into the role of, like, a CEO, you know, and trying to be there for all these people in the salon. And then I think there was a lot of excitement around, like, you know, a young, passionate, like, I was very driven. I was very involved in, like, the community of nails and because that's what it started out as, the nail salon. And um, it was exciting. And I had just so many people coming, like, I want to come work for you. I want to come work for you. I had no, like structure. I had no hiring plan, no onboarding plan. I was just like, yeah, come work for me. Come work for me. Come work for me. Like before I knew it, I had a salon of eight stations with 16 people working there. So there was always somebody in one of those chairs. Mm -hmm. And while the money was great and everything was rolling in, like I was living in chaos. I was in survival mode. I didn't know what was going on ever. I know you don't want to talk about it, but coming off of uh, postpartum, that's not a That's Mm -hmm. not an easy thing to navigate anyway, but Mm -hmm. when you have something else tumultuous going on. Mm -hmm. So what, I mean, your husband, like what, what was life like with a new baby and a husband and going through all of that in the business? Because there has to be, if you really, there has to be a teaching moment Mm -hmm. in that, because that's a lot of. I think my teaching moment was, I mean, there was. There was a very specific moment where I was like, I can't do this, where I was like, I have to have help. Like, that, mm-hmm. I can't do it all. I used to think I could do it all. I was invincible. But all I had to focus on was myself and my mm-hmm. job, right? Like, mm-hmm. I was so focused on, at one point, school, work, getting my education, getting into the salon. Like, that was my focus, right? Mm-hmm. Um, my first son, he wasn't planned either. So that was another, you know, turn ball. And my brother-in-law is the one that called me up one night and was like, this is just a detour in your journey. Because I was like, I wanted a house. I wanted to do this and that in my yeah. career. And he's like, it's just a detour. Just do it with a kid now. And so I was like, okay, you're right. Just do it with a kid. Sounds easy enough, right? Um, but there was a very difficult moment one at one point during my first stages of motherhood. And that's when I was like, I can't do it all. So how am I going to like survive? And that moment was... Um, yeah, it, it was a tough moment. Like, I I was very much surviving. Um, so you're just, like, on autopilot, mm-hmm. I would imagine, mm-hmm. right? Like, this gets done, this gets done, mm-hmm. this gets, and then I go home, and this gets done. So when, I had no connections. Like, I feel like I had zero connections with anything. Like, it was literally just that, like, the motions. Like, mm-hmm. 
And the worst thing is, is a lot of that time of my life, I don't remember. Yeah, because you were just going nonstop. Which is the worst thing of it. Like, I remember the outcome of it, and I remember some of the highs and some of the lows and the very main things. But when I think back, like, unless I really sit there and think about it and I'm reminded of things, or mm -hmm. sometimes I'll look back at pictures, like, with my family, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, if I don't have these pictures, I would not remember this trip or this moment at all, you know? And that's the worst part of it for me. So that's when the hard started in my personal side of life mm -hmm. during my early stages of entrepreneurship. Um, and then it kind of feathered into entrepreneurship because I got into this weird push and pull where I was like, if I'm really focused at home on my kid and stuff, I'm failing for these people that rely on me mm -hmm. at the salon that need me there. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm so focused over here and doing all the things over here, then I'm like, and now I'm failing as a mom. So it was a really hard, hard time to you navigate. You just described perfectly what every professional woman goes through, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's And it's not even just those that are entrepreneurs. It's mm -hmm. those that are on a very serious yeah. career track, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, but if I'm here, I can't be here, and mm -hmm. you want to be, and you only have so much time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's how do you navigate that and navigate it? to your expectations, mm -hmm. not to the expectations of others, I think. Oh, yeah. So talk about that because you said to me, I almost gave up my mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. And was it at that point? It was not at that point. It was actually after COVID, which we survived COVID. We made it through COVID great. Um, well, <laughs> great, obviously. We didn't close our doors is what I mean, but mm -hmm. we made it through great. Um I almost gave up my business after COVID. I had just realized that my business plan that I had going at that time wasn't going to work for me personally. And as selfish as that sounds, is like it just wasn't going to. I even had somebody tell me like, oh, um, you can't be a mom and be a business owner. That's why I chose business. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. that's really like setting me sad. up. You know, mm -hmm. it's really sad, but it's not true. And in that moment, right. I felt like it was. And I was like, oh, well, I can't do it then. Mm -hmm. um, and then I kind of thought about it more, and I was like, what if I just change my business structure? Um, before COVID, the way the salon was operated was, for the most part, good. And there were some things in it that were just very questionable, and it was things that I kept from how it was operated before. Mm -hmm. So when we came back from COVID, there were certain things that I changed within the structure of the financial side of the business. And a lot of people didn't like it that worked for me. And um, they didn't like it at all, so much that I lost all my staff. Change and is hard for people. Change is hard, very yeah. hard. Mm -hmm. And I know that. And so I lost all my staff. Um, we came back with myself, um, my salon manager, Jennifer, which what I was going to say to you is delegating. That's been the biggest thing that I've learned and that has helped me survive. Mm -hmm. um, but she's been my constant. And so kind of duplicating what I expect and do in the salon in her mm -hmm. has been the best thing for me because she's been able to take that on and I've trusted her to take that on. It's also made me realize you can allow somebody else to do certain things. There's no other way to survive. Mm -hmm. um, but so we did that. We came back. It was her, myself, and one brand new hire out of school. And I was like, oh my gosh, like how are we supposed to survive? <laughs> like in my head, like behind the scenes of what's Physically, what you could see, what the public can see. Oh, they just lost all their staff. There's just three of them. There's this new girl. Well, in my head, I'm like, I need to find time to hire a whole new staff, train a whole new staff, train this girl. Meanwhile, what's my family going to do back home? Like, how are they going to handle this? And then it's like, I still have all these fixed expenses. Like I said in the beginning, I got a business loan. Mm -hmm. So I have a business loan to keep paying for. I've, I have the rent to pay for for this building. I have all the overhead that's fixed on top of all the variable things that come into it. So in my head, I'm thinking that way, not just what people literally see, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was very, very difficult. And that's when I was like, I'm done. I can't do this again. I can't do the constant turnover. I was like, something really has to change. I hired a new staff, got it to the point of, I was like, okay, if I sold it, it would be okay. Like somebody would be just fine taking this over. They would have revenue from it, but somebody that just has more time, you know? And then when I got to that point, I was like, do I really want to give up on my dream? <laughs> like when I was actually sitting down and trying to figure out like what it would look like to sell the business, when I was really getting into the nitty gritty of like, let's figure out what, you know, the price mm -hmm. tag on my business. And when I started looking for like a real estate agent and like a commercial 
um, company to go with and stuff, that's when I was like, wait a minute, like, am I really just letting go of all of this for, for what, for one, like, not one, obviously there was a lot of downs, small ones, mm -hmm. but one big down, you know? Yeah. Um, and I was like, why don't I just pivot again? And that's when I switched my structure from a commission salon to a leasing salon, mm -hmm. which kind of took my hands out of a lot of the, their yeah. stuff. They run their own businesses essentially. Right. Um, that also came with its different challenges, and we're going through them now even that I didn't expect, but there's still a lot of challenges with that. And the other thing that kind of sparked it to me to not give up was my property manager saying, hey, the space next to you is available. You have the right of first refusal. What do you want to do? And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm literally in the middle of selling my business and trying to figure that out. And you're like, what do you want to do? And I was like, oh, God. So I was so now like, you have a hair salon. And now I have a hair salon. Yes. I went home to my husband again. I said, hey, this space next door, I know we're in the middle of this. He's like, go for it, babe. Let's do it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> He's too supportive. But now we have that. Um, I think the biggest thing for all of that is like, I heard this quote recently actually at a beauty business event, and it was like, you haven't failed until you throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. And that really stood out to me because I was like, that is so true. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't fail yet. I thought I was failing. I thought I failed already because I lost all these people, but I hadn't thrown the towel in quite yet. And so that kind of turned around for me. Like, I didn't fail. I just pivoted. And so I think the biggest thing to think about is like, can I pivot? Can I change something yeah. before I actually just throw in the towel? And I think there's always something you can do before you fully give up. Yes. So, in so many areas of so life. So many areas. Motherhood, mm -hmm. like partnership, you know, with your spouse at home and in business with your peers mm -hmm. or with your manager or even with your stylist. There's so many things you can change before you just give up. And ownership is ownership like mm -hmm. you have to own every single part of it not just the physical salon the business you have and mm -hmm. the income that comes with it but it's like owning every aspect owning um like owning the falls and the goods so like if something bad happens I can't just say oh well it's because so-and-so didn't do their job or so-and-so wasn't here for yeah. that or that like I have to own that okay why didn't that happen? I have to find the problem. I have to fix the problem. That's like my job. So I have to own every single part of the business, not just the business. If that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So you have two children now. Mm -hmm. So in that journey mm -hmm. of developing a business, business ownership, all of the ups and downs, mm -hmm. and you have two children. Mm -hmm. So how are you navigating it now? What does that look like now? I think I look at my kids now. Whereas with my first child when I found out I was pregnant, I was like, oh, this is going to set me back. And now I'm like, that's what catapults me into everything I do now. Every time I make a decision, whether it's business or personally, whatever, it's always with them in mind. Like, what is this going to do to them? Or what is this going to do with for our time together? Mm -hmm. And so that's where they come in and all those decisions. And now I really make sure that, especially while they're young, they're five and two. Mm -hmm. They really need me, you know. And so especially while they're young, I really try to remember, like, if I do this, What's that going to take away from my family? How am I going to balance that out? Yeah. And so that's really the main thing. You look thing. at your time differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's different when there is an emotional attachment to that yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things that I always ask my guests is, do you remember when you hit six figures? Because mm -hmm. I remember, I mean, I'm sure with the business, businesses are so interesting, especially yeah. when they've gone through the cycle that yours has. Mm -hmm. So do you remember when you hit it the first time? <laughs> I do, actually. <laughs> and it's really funny because, like I said, I was it was that first year. Mm -hmm. So I took over the salon in May, so May of 2018, and I was doing my taxes. And I had no idea what I made that year. I was just going. Like, I was like, oh, we need this. We need that. Let's buy it. Let's buy it. The money was there. Mm -hmm. But not once did I fully sit down and look at my numbers. I had my husband helping me. Then I hired my accountant because I was like, this is beyond me. Mm -hmm. Do it for me. Here's all my passwords to everything. Just make sure it's taken care of. We'd have our monthly meetings. And I think in that first year, she'd be like, okay, we reconciled this. We did this. This is looking like this. This is looking like that. And I'm like, great, cool. Let's keep going. I had no idea what she was talking about. Like, I didn't care to take the time to figure it out even. I was just like, that looks great. Then we're doing our taxes. And <clears throat> we were like, just, I don't know, we were like 16,000 shy of half a million. And I was like, oh, crap. Like, we did this, yes. you know? It was, I had no idea where we were at all until we did our taxes that year. And I was like, oh, where did all that go, though? <laughs> I was like, what happened with everything? 
So I think the first time I realized it was, again, not even realizing it. Mm -hmm. And it was when we sat down to do taxes. The second time it was the same thing. I just was still going through the motions, just running, running, running. Every time I would hit more and higher and higher, and I would, I had no idea it was happening, truly. So it would literally be tax time. We're sitting down yeah. to do everything. And that's when I'd realize it. And then I'd be like, oh, let's celebrate this, you I know? I was going to say, yeah. did you celebrate? Because I did, that's yeah. that's a big accomplishment. I did, I did. And at first I was like, well, where did all that go, you know? Because obviously you spend a lot. You it takes money lot. to make money. Yes. Um, but I did. I definitely celebrated because I didn't realize what I had hit. And I was just like, holy moly. And I celebrated with my husband. I wasn't going to go around and flaunt it and all yeah. that. So I was always very nervous about that. Even like this, I get nervous about sharing a lot of my story. I don't know why. I think that's probably natural, but I do. And so I went home, and my husband and I just, we celebrated. But it was just crazy to think that that had happened, yeah. So any goals you want to share? You now have a hair salon, mm -hmm. which is relatively new, right? Yeah. We're yeah. still in, like, the nitty-gritty of when you start a business, any business, I'd say it takes, like, three to seven years to really get it functioning. And so we finally mm -hmm. have this, like, nail salon, I feel like. In a good place. In a good place. Mm -hmm. And now it's the hair salon is really the focus. And it's the silliest things to figure out how to navigate. You're like, okay, I have leasers. They know the expectation. But you have to really figure out all the small things from, like, chore charts to how things are going to flow to actually flow. Mm -hmm. Like, you can have the space in place. You can have the people in place. But you have to figure out processes and systems to really make it flow. And that's different for everything. I thought it'd be the exact same as the nail salon. It's so different. Yeah. It is yeah. so different. Um, so that's relatively new. We're still working on figuring all that out. I'm sorry. Say the question one more time. <laughs> Oh, that was good. So I'm going to ask you another one. Yeah. Is there something that you've read, a book, a podcast, mm -hmm. something that's been super helpful that you would recommend to others? I think the biggest thing that I've taken away lately, I used to try to read. I This is so horrible. I get so bored reading like self-help books. <laughs> They're so boring to me. And so my thing is I've gone to a couple retreats. I went to a retreat that one of your actual mm -hmm. – um, Guests yes. did, yeah. yeah. So I went to her retreat. That was very inspiring. I've been trying to get more involved in the community and talking to other entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. but not just in my industry, but like different industries, mm -hmm. because figuring out what works for them and trying to implement it into mine Learn, really yeah. helps. So I think. What about podcasts? No, there's no. There's, I mean, there's some in my industry that I'll listen to, like mm -hmm. nail specific or like there's a Jay Z but, Styles one. Yeah. But not super self help because, like I said, I genuinely just get bored listening to those. Yeah. Like, I like listening to inspiring stories. Yeah. I was thinking more like business podcasts would be. Mm, no. No. I okay. really don't. Like, truly. Interesting. I know. Yeah. I get, well, no. I shouldn't say no. My husband will play some and we'll watch them. And I couldn't tell you what they are, but we'll watch them a lot. Mm. I just get bored. Yeah. Like, I need, like, story entertainment. Like, I like inspiring stories, mm -hmm. like you, what you do and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. that's entertaining to me. Like, I need entertainment versus just education. I think yeah. that's something I really struggle when with. Well, it's more, I think it's more impactful. Like I was saying yeah. to you, one of the reasons that I love this podcast is because you hear the real stories mm -hmm. of what's really going on. Mm -hmm. And the more that you hear those, the more you can take nuggets out of them, yeah. I think. Yeah. And I take away more from like, talking to people like this. So if I listen to an inspiring story, like I will reach out to that person and be like, hey, can you tell me a little bit how you mm -hmm. did X, Y, Z? Like I will get more out of that. And I think- at, That's a teaching moment though. Yeah. A lot of people won't do that. Yeah. It's yeah. scary. It wasn't until Gretchen's retreat that I realized that that was okay yeah. to do, to talk to people and reach out because there were so many of us there that were sharing our stories. Mm -hmm. And I went up to this lady there that was just super inspiring and really what I aspire to be as a business owner and operate the way she operates. Mm -hmm. And, like, she has been able to completely step away from her business, and it'll run. Yeah. And so I'm like, wow, how did she do that? And I just asked her. Mm -hmm. And she shared everything, like, yeah. from A to Z. She was so happy to share everything. And I was like, people will do this, you know? Yeah. And then another girl, she was, like, hosting something else, and I'm like, how do you make sure your staff cleans up the way you want them? To like it's like simple stuff, you know. But just actually being willing to ask people questions, I get way more out of connection and talking to people mm -hmm. than listening to all the perfected and polished books and things, you know. Yeah, I take more away from that. Okay, so last question mm -hmm. then. Mom tip. Mom tip. Oh, mom tip. <laughs> You're like, what do I 
want to say? What do there is so much <laughs> I want to say, but what would I say is like my best mom tip? I would just say like freedom is really freedom of time. Mm. Not like people are always like financial freedom, this and that. For me, it's like freedom of time. Take the time with your kids because it really does go by way too fast. My son's already five. He's going into kindergarten. I'm like, where? How? You know? Mm. When my oh second my one, I slow down. And I think that Actually, I have a good tip. I told this to my friend who was having a baby not too long ago. And I just told her, I said, the beginning stages for me, people are like, that's the easiest. That was the hardest for me. Whether it was because of the postpartum or because it was actually like my life completely changed with my first kid. Now I'm waking up every single night and my sleep was precious. And I found myself being like, I can't wait for you to be able to crawl and walk so I don't have to have you on my hip all the time. I can't wait for you to do this. Like I was always like longing for the next Next. phase Mm -hmm. so it could get easier. And so I told her, I said, don't long for the next phase. Like, enjoy the phase you're in yeah. because it goes by so fast. And as crappy as it might be sometimes to be, like, constantly have them on your hip or cooking with them on your hip or trying to vacuum with them on your hip, anything you're trying to do, they're on you, right? Now I look back and I'm like, gosh, I wish I enjoyed those moments more than being like, I wish you were just a little bit older so we could, like, move on, you know? Yeah. I think just really enjoy the focus moment. on the lane you're in and mm-hmm. enjoy the moment. That would be yeah. my best tip. It's a great one. Mm-hmm. Thank, Thank you for doing this. Thank and you thank you for, for being me. honest. Yeah, sorry yeah. I cried. <laughs> oh, don't be sorry. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Yeah. I had a good time. Thank you. <laughs>